Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Latif. It is uh, episode 19, and it is Sunday night. I love Sunday nights mainly because tomorrow is Monday. And let me explain why. Because I get a lot of flack for this. And basically, in my opinion, work... As far as any potential or any ah, any new connects, a lot of that stuff doesn't happen on the weekend unless I'm on the road. Okay, so now, as you know, I'm off the road until February 15th, the day after the Valentine's Day. So I'll be off the road until then, which is great. It gives me time to do everything I need to do. Um, I love being off. I love being on the road though. If I'm off for a certain amount of time, I start to itch to get back on the road. But you know, there's times that, you know, being on the road can really be overwhelming. Now it's cool for those who that's all they want to do. They, they basically live to hit the road, to do the shows and to get paid or whatever the hell that they're doing. Me, it's a little different. I love it. I wouldn't change anything about it. But I love being in my office. I love creating. I love doing new stuff. It has nothing to do with the money. And that's not always a good thing because I could spend weeks and weeks on a project that will not generate a red cent, okay? And when you have a family and people depend on you and you got responsibilities and you have bills, that doesn't help. So I'm fortunate to have a wife that understands me, knows my mentality. She knows to what point to allow me, up to what point to allow me to play. And then she knows when to tell me, hey, uh, you got to make some loot this week. So, um, so I'm fortunate about that because it's just a desire that's in me. Um, I just love creating. I love trying out new stuff. Uh, it, whether it's the it's success or it fails, that's really not the excitement for me. The excitement is the actual journey. It sounds weird, but it's true. It's just like I could work all week long booking shows. Let's say booking shows. Okay, I'm working Monday through Friday, and then Saturday I go out and I do the shows. Doing the shows is not the fun part for me. For, for my wife, she loves she loves going. To, I like it, don't get me wrong, but it's not between the journey and the end of the journey. Like, you know, actually the, what they, what would we call it? The reward. Okay, so I got the hustle, and then at the end you got the reward. So everybody hustles for the reward. You work to get paid. You work out to get big. You, you know, you practice to get perfect, you know? Me, it's not about the end result. It's about the journey. It's about what I'm doing. And that's the part of me that I really, really love. And that's what Monday's about. Monday is that journey. A lot of times on the weekend, that journey is over. And I'm um, basically benefiting from all that work. That's when I benefit. That's when the money comes. That's when the traveling. That's when the beautiful hotels. That's when, you know, the fans and being up on the stage and being around the other. That's when that happens on the weekends. But that's not the highlight of my career. It's the hustle. It's the journey. So I love that stuff. You know, a lot of times I'll create stuff just to create it. And sometimes releasing it to the world or trying to make it successful at the end is not the exciting part. <laughs> I'll give you an example. I wanted to put out a cologne. I did a cologne in like 2008 called Freestyle by La. 
It cost me $23,000 to create and get products shipped to me. That was one shipment, okay? That was to get all the, 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 the formulas together, to get the bottling, the packaging, the shipping, the patents, everything that I had to do to get this cologne, okay? And then what happened was once the cologne came, it was almost like the hustle died down. I ended up keeping most of that stuff. I sent some out. I was actually giving stuff away. I wasn't even promoting it to sell it. It was the weirdest, weirdest thing, you know? And I think about it. I think about it, but, and, and I try to think, why am I like that? Why, what is it? You know, maybe somebody else knows. I sit down and, and the only thing I can think of is that whole hustle, that whole journey, the whole idea to be able to say, I did this, or I was the first to do this, that to me is the reward. Just the fact that I took it from A to Z and I created this thing out of thin hair, out of just right off the top of my head. I made a couple of dollars, but I didn't even make enough to cover what it cost me. But that was okay, I didn't cry about it. I'm still extremely, extremely proud of it. The same thing happened with my books. I told, I, I told you the story, the first book that I released, it took Angel coming to me and say, hey, Okay, like she waited. <clears throat> she saw me finish the book. She saw me edit it. She saw me do everything. But then I put it on the shelf and she waited. She didn't know what I was up to. She didn't question me. But then when it took too long, she was like, um, what's up with the book? I said, yeah, yeah, I finished it. It's, it's good, it's good, it's ready to go. She said, so when is it gonna go? I said, well, I, I don't know yet. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's ready. She was like, well, you said it's finished and it's edited. I said, yeah, but I don't think it's ready. But really it wasn't that it wasn't ready. I wasn't ready mentally. I wasn't ready. And, and when I think about it now, I'm going to tell you what I wasn't ready for. I wasn't ready for the rejection. I was so proud of this book that I was dreading letting anyone read it because I was scared of that one or two or a thousand people <laughs> to say, yo, this book sucks. Yo, you need to stop writing like right now, you know? So that scared me more than anything. And I think that was, maybe that was the problem with the cologne too, you know? I mean, I, I, put, I put it on, it smelled good. So many people loved it. I had a couple of people said something, said something negative about it. But that goes with it. You can't have everybody like it. It's an artistic piece, just like clothing, just like sunglasses, just like shoes. Not everybody wears. Some people say, oh, I love those shoes. Other people say, those things are ugly as hell. So, but to me, fashion is, is artistic. It's an artistic. It's all subjective. It's all about, you know, some people think it looks dope. Other people think it looks stupid. So I felt the same way with the cologne, you know. Well, at that point, I didn't want people to tell me anything, but I was satisfied with the idea that I created this cologne out of thin air. It's crazy. The Freestyle Music Awards, I did that in 2008. It was a spectacular event. Anybody that was there, and there was a lot of artists there, they'll tell you. They still come up to me and they say, man, you needed to continue doing it. I would have, but I had people throwing a bunch of wrenches and they kind of messed everything up. And, um, and I was pretty much forced to just stop doing it. Just the people that were backing it up got a real sour taste um, and they didn't want to finance it no more. So I was like, okay, but check this out. Never once ever was I ever concerned with how many people showed up to that event. You see, in my opinion, I created the Freestyle Music Awards. It was like uh, an event for artists by artists. That's really what it was. It was for artists by artists. I didn't get involved in the promotions. I mean, let me let me get let me try. It wasn't the promotions of pulling people in. I was involved in the promotions of showing people or telling people how spectacular this thing is gonna be. I just want this to be totally over the top. And I don't think anyone, though people have tried, have topped what I've done, and I'm proud of that. And I don't care if there was 10 people. And there wasn't a lot of people, it wasn't sold out. It should have been, and I'll tell you this, the second one would have been sold out, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because the artists would have talked about it. The artists that attended 
would have spoke up for it because they loved it because we went all out but I think I think one of the reasons hold on no tea tonight folks water I'm a little hot um <clears throat> But I think one of the reasons why it turned out to be this such a beautiful event was because I didn't make any money from it. I didn't want to. The investor offered me $10,000. She said, I'm going to give you $10,000 for the event, you know, for putting it together. I was like, honestly, can we take the $10,000 and put it into the VIP? See, I had an idea for the VIP. I wanted this thing to be like incredible. I envisioned there was this big yard in the back of the Miami Dade. I wanted this humongous white tent. I'm talking about huge, like a huge. And I wanted like chandeliers inside. And I wanted this plush carpeting that looked like freaking fur on the floor. And someone else brought up um, Cuban cigar rollers, which we hired, a buffet, the top of the line liquor. I mean, the place was incredible and we did it. We did it. It was dope. Um, if you look into the Freestyle Music Awards 2008 or the FMA as they call it, look at the trophy. Okay, the trophy has my logo. It has the La Entertainment logo, the La logo on it. Um, now, this was not a trophy that was made at, you know, Trophies R Us. This trophy was custom made, okay? I wanted something that was unique. I wanted something that was big, that really looked classy. I wanted something that was pretty expensive. I didn't want something that anybody can ever duplicate, ever. People were sending me ideas, those acrylic microphones or the plaques, and I was like, man, there is nothing special about that. I wanted something that was unique, that if you saw it from a distance, you knew what it was for, you knew what it was, and we, we accomplished that. So when you get a chance, check out the Freestyle Music Award trophy. Ask anybody who's been there, or you know, uh, if you post it somewhere, uh, you could probably Google it. I guarantee you, if you Google Freestyle Music Awards 2008, you'll see the trophy. So try that out. Um, and then I had the La logo. Now, of course, I had some, some people speak up and say, yeah, but why does it have to have the La logo? Well, let's, let's, let's look at it this way. I, I produced it. I produced the event. I didn't want any money. I wanted something that tied to me. Now, the Tonys is named after somebody. The Emmys is named after Emerson. The Oscars is named after somebody. What else? You know? You know, so why not? You have the MTV Awards. You know, I have the BET Awards. So this was the La Entertainment Awards. I just thought it was an incredible, incredible event. It was, uh, you know, red carpet. We had 16 white limousines, stretch limousines. We had 32 police escorts on motorcycle. We had both mayors of Miami, because Miami has two mayors, one for Miami and one for Miami-Dade. Both of them attended. Um, man, so it was an incredible, and I'll always be proud of it. Um, and it was, you know, a tuxedo. It wasn't, yo, you just walked up in there. It was tuxedo. So it was a, a beautiful, beautiful event, and I'm extremely, extremely proud of it. And I don't care if I never do it again, and I don't care if it didn't make me a red cent. It still went down as in history as the most incredible freestyle music awards ever. So, and it would have gotten better as we went along, you know. So, but, you know, I love the hustle. Once it was done, you see, it was easy for me to just let it go. I should have maybe pushed and, and done it again, but it was too much opposition, man. Too many haters. People were getting jealous. Basically, people were going after my investors for their own personal interests. Instead of saying, okay... Well, this investor is investing in something to put us in a different level. On a different level, uh, we have five HD cameras. Uh, HD was the thing back then; it wasn't 4K. So, we have five of them, um, and I have all that footage. It just has to fi find time, and one day I'll sit down and edit everything together. I just have to know what I'm doing as far as what's the story. What is, it has to be something else to it. But I have that footage. I have it, and it's incredible. So. 
so you know so once it was it ended it didn't it didn't kill me I, it wasn't the end of the world for me because i did it and that was you know that was a great thing for me you know uh when i was buying real estate once i when i sold homes it was no problem i wasn't attached i was like the the whole thing is when i sold the home when i bought the home it was like wow i can't believe i bought this thing you know and it, it was just it was it was cool so you know so it's all about the hustle for me on going for that goal getting but once i get to that goal it's like okay been there done that you know and i i probably have to get off of that that, that might not be a good thing i don't know that's just the way I am right now. So this is why Mondays are cool for me. I, I, it's almost like the lotto. It's like every day I don't know what's going to happen. I know what I'm working on, but in between what's going to happen, because it's in between I'm reaching out to people, I'm talking to people, I'm coming up with all these different ideas, I'm implementing different ideas, you know? So I never know what this week, and I say that, what's this week going to bring me? Like this week, what is it going to bring me? I'm hoping it doesn't bring me anything bad. I don't want no tragedies. I don't want no, no bad news. God forbid, please. Well, what good is it going to bring me? Will it bring me anything? Maybe not. But that's cool. There's another Monday coming after that. As long as I'm around. So, you know. So anyway. So that's that's my things. You know. And that's why sometimes you'll see me. I'll post something. You know. Uh, thank God it's Monday. You know, so T G I M. <laughs> Thank God it's Monday. And if you don't say boo, you know, I tell people all the time, like it's Sunday, it's Saturday, it's the weekend. What are you doing? You hustling or you relaxing? I try to pull back on either side. I try to front like I'm relaxing. But if you see the way I relax, you'll be like, okay. If I decide to sit in front of the TV, you're going to notice something. I'm sitting there with a notebook and a pen. My wife asks me all the time, why you always got to bring that notebook and pen? I mean, she used to ask me. She doesn't anymore. She understands. Um, and I'm always taking tutorials on YouTube or if I'm watching a documentary about something. And it's just, you know, that's my way of relaxing, you know, and I love it. You know, it's not about sitting back watching a movie. That I force myself to do it a lot of times. I enjoy it once I'm into it, or once we get to the end of the movie. And I love the fact that I can sit back chill out with my family, my wife in particular, and, and, and watch a movie. Uh, today we decided to go out, go get some chilies. We haven't been out like since the holidays. We've just been in doing what we have to do. We haven't even been out. So uh, we wanted to bring Santana. We picked her up from her mom today. Uh, now uh, She's off of school tomorrow. I think it's Martin Luther King. And then Tuesday is a teacher work day. It's a weird thing that they have out here. I don't know if they have it anywhere else. I had never heard of it before here. Um, but it's supposed to be a day out of the year or a day, a day out of the month that the teachers choose to go to school with no students there so they can do the work, like do tests, uh, check tests, work on the curriculum, whatever. But, <clears throat> so we went to pick her up. And she loves chili. She loves chilies. So we didn't say anything to her. And she was on her phone in the back. And we just pulled up to chilies. And she looked up. But it was weird. She didn't really give us any kind of uh, response. We're like, yeah, it's a surprise. And she was like, hmm. What it was is she wasn't feeling good. We didn't realize this. We didn't realize this until we got there. And she ordered her food. She didn't touch anything. She didn't touch the appetizer. Anything. She ordered a steak and some french fries. She didn't touch it. So... We wrapped it, we brought it home, um, and that was it. She just wasn't feeling good. So I think it's a stomach virus. So she's already asleep, so hopefully uh, tomorrow, good thing she doesn't have school tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow she'll wake up and she'll be fine. So that's the only thing with the little kids, you know. And when she leaves her mom, she's got three other siblings there. She has a baby uh, sister and then a small another sister and then her brother, who's a year younger than her, a couple years. Nope. King is five, so three years younger than her, um, and apparently two of them weren't feeling well. So I guess she caught whatever it was that they had. So, but <clears throat> that's <clears throat> that's what uh, this household is about. Who knows? I'll probably be sick tomorrow. I'm hoping not. I hate when I get sick because I just feel. Because no matter what, even when I'm down and I'm feel, I have to. Angel kind of gets me in bed, and she's like, "Chill, watch TV. Let me bring something to eat." 
stay home. She'll take the, the phone because I have a phone that connects from my office to, to the house. And when I go to the house, I, I switch it over so it rings. I can pick it up if I'm in the house and she switches it back. So it won't ring in the house. Um, she, uh, she'll try to block that. But when she turns her head, I end up coming into, uh, into the office. I can't help it. You know, unless I get so bad that I just can't, I, I have to shut down. You know, I don't get sick that often, you know, but when I do, I'm like a baby. I feel like I'm going to die. I swear to God. I start talking to my kids and start telling them, you know, like, you know, remember where the, where the, where the, the, the combination of the safe is and uh, don't worry, remember this, uh, make sure you guys stay close. And <laughs> I start, I start, you know, giving them, telling them, and they're like, yo, dad, what are you, what are you talking about? Chill out. You know, you, you're good. You got freaking, you got a cold, you got a you got the flu, you're not dying, you know? So, but you know, I was just, I get really, you know, I get messed up like that. Growing up, I was never sick, thank God. I don't re ever remember, like, I'm sure I was, but I don't remember. So it wasn't anything that was, it wasn't a regular thing. Don't remember being in bed. I think I remember going to the hospital to get my tonsils out. That's about it. Yeah, and back in those days, they took your tonsils out. Basically for no reason. They took them out before they got infected. Nowadays, they really don't do that. I didn't get my kids' uh, tonsils taken out, so um, they have them. So apparently, that probably never had to happen. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing that they used to do back in the days, man. So, um, I don't know. Maybe it's... I gotta ask Erica about that, because she does all that stuff. So, I don't know if it's something they recommend. But, but anyway, um, so this week... Got a bunch of little things that I'm, I'm putting together. Um, still getting over the holiday. Um, calls are starting to come in, so it's starting to look good. I'm getting excited. Um, I got a bunch of new stuff that I'm working on, and I really want to show you guys. Uh, when you guys get a chance, <clears throat> okay, go on to my website. It's www.latifmercado.com. Okay, just go on to it. It's not a site where you go and see all this stuff. So I'm not going to bore you. What it is, it's links back to some of the things that I do. So it's just like a landing page. That's all it is. So you'll see the link to my podcast, the link to my blogs. If you guys never read my blogs, you might want to check out my blogs. You might enjoy them. Also, uh, there's a link there back to La Radio Live and also all my individual social medias, I'm trying to think, and then also to Amazon if you ever want to get any of my books. So it's a landing page. It's not like you go on my website to look around and say, oh, this is cute. Look at this animation. No, you go on there. Also, the vlogs are there. You know, if you guys have never checked out my vlogs, go onto my website, click vlogs, and check out, check them out. You'll see what they're about there. They're pretty cool. Um, People always show me a lot of love with those, and those continue on next month. So be on the lookout for the for those video logs, and those are all video, you know. So, but you know, it's www.la dash. I'm sorry, latifmercado.com. All right. So don't forget, check that out. Yeah, I, I say that so that way I don't have to send you guys to my Facebook. Oh, check out my Facebook at Latif Mercado. Everything, just so you know, is at Latif Mercado. So if you need to find me on you know, Twitter, if you need to find me on TikTok, on Snapchat, on Instagram, on Pinterest, Tumblr, Medium, Reddit, it's Latif Mercado. I'm everywhere under that, that name. So, uh, so the website is also Latif Mercado. So if you just go there, you'll be able to find anything that I'm doing. And I recommend you guys go in there, Lock in that site because I have a lot of new stuff, a lot of things, cool things that I'm going to be working in. And I really want to get a lot of the people who are listening to this podcast or who watch my vlogs or who basically engage with me. I want to get you guys involved. I have a bunch of ideas. And if you're a true lover of this genre, if you have any kind of desire, if you've ever had desire to be involved in this genre, some capacity, I might have opportunities for you guys. And, and so, you know, don't look for stuff overnight. I'm constantly, constantly, anybody who's followed me over the you know, probably last 15 years will see that there's always something new in the work. So just come on, follow me, hit some notifications so that way whenever I do something new. And if you engage with me and let me know if there's something that I'm missing, is there something that you'd like to learn? Or maybe you have an idea of some sort of content that I can put out. Maybe I should do one of my videos based on something that you would like to know 
maybe I can do that, but I won't know unless you guys ask or if you if you comment. If you ask anybody, especially on the YouTubes, really on any of my social media, I reply to you. If I don't reply, it's because I haven't seen it yet. But the minute I see it, so if you see all of a sudden I replied or I liked a post or a comment that you did, it's because I just saw it. I don't wait. I don't look at it and say, oh, that was cute, and then come back a week later. No. I reply to you right away, and I pr appreciate even the criticism. Even the criticism. If you have, if you have it in your heart to, to you know, find the time to even criticize me, which means you have to listen to it, hey, man, I appreciate that too. You know, so... But anyway, um, what else? I think that's it for now. And it's Sunday night. You guys are probably home chilling. I don't think anybody's out. Well, tomorrow's, I don't know if it's, tomorrow's a holiday for everybody. Martin Luther King, I don't remember that. I mean, phew. I mean, growing up in New York, was it a holiday? I remember it being a big deal, but did we actually have school off? I don't remember. I think we did. But I don't remember. Anyway, so if anybody's going out tonight because they have the day off tomorrow, be safe out there. Okay? And until tomorrow, be cool. And good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.